New Japan Pro Wrestling Hyper Battle 2022. This took place this morning. We had multitude of title matches on here. IWGP Heavyweight title, or World Heavyweight title, excuse me. The IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team titles at King of Pro Wrestling. Both sets of junior heavyweight titles are going to be on the line this morning. So we might as well talk about them. And like you know, we are the real, real talk of pro wrestling. We're the almighty SOS Wrestling Network. So be sure you like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Tell a friend to tell a friend. So if you're not aware, New Japan Pro Wrestling has usually run a big Tokyo show at the Ria Goku uh, Ku uh, Kuigen. If I'm sure I pronounced that horribly wrong. In April, they usually run it about April. Uh, they used to go under the name Sakura Genesis or Invasion Attack. That wouldn't be my favorite one. This year, they chose to pull a, a name from the past. They choose the name Hyper Battle, and the last time New Japan actually used this name was back in 2004. So we had an attendance of 4,770 or 4,755 fans, which is almost 300 more than the Sakura Genesis 2021 show in New Japan's largest non-Tokyo Dome attendance since the pandemic has started. In a more interesting sign, it sounded like the hottest New Japan crowd of this era with a lot of audible crowd reactions and up and down this card that we had. Although I'm still not sure if this is a side of increased crowd investment or a sign of the audience thinking that the COVID restrictions are riding down. But either way, I still feel it's a really good sign here. So let's go ahead and talk about the show that we had here. So first match we had, we had Jado. Tangaloa, Tama Tonk, and Hiroshi Tanahashi taking on Bullet Club's Ghetto. Yujo Takahashi, Chase Owens, and Bad Luck Fale here. Jado actually submitted Ghetto with the crossface of Jado around 10 minutes and 28 seconds right here. The crowd really seemed to care about this match. I think this achieved a lot of the goals it was trying to do. It was kind of a eh match, but the story that they're trying to tell, the crowd definitely invested in this. They wanted to see Jado get that victory over Ghetto right here. So after the match, Tanahashi gave the Lion Mark t-shirt to the Gorillas of Destiny. They formally joined the New Japan Army and loses all, or and the loose association of, you know, like the Chaos guys, you know, GBH. So that is where uh, my man Gorillas of Destiny are right now. So they are a part of the New Japan regular army. So moving on up the card, we have Shingo Takagi and Tetsuya Naito representing Los Ingobernables de Japón, taking on the United Empires, Will Ospreay and Aaron Hanari right here. So... This was a really, really fun undercard match right here. Shingo Takagi put Aaron Hanari away via Made in Japan about like nine minutes, a little bit over nine minutes right here. Uh, Hanari showed tremendous growth in this match as well, and he looked really good against Shingo. So Osprey was good. Takagi was good as well. So this is a really enjoyable undercard tag match. You don't really have to go out of your way to watch it, but I still feel this is pretty solid and pretty enjoyable right here. So next we have our first title match of the show. We have for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships, the team of six or nine being Master Wado and Rizuki Taguchi taking on the Bullet Club's cutest tag team, El Phantasmo and Taichi Shimori right here. So Rizuki Taguchi pinned El Phantasmo via Sunset Flip cut back around 15 minutes and 13 seconds right here. This is another solid a match right here i would only go with so far to call it decent not really good not really great pace kind of felt slow for the four guys that were involved El phantasmo ishimori's antics to some might be a little bit annoying uh they had a lot of gay panic comedy spots in this match and i kind of think that kind of fell out of place i can see a lot of people not enjoying this match like i said i thought it was pretty decent or not even pretty decent i thought it was decent and just in itself so Next match we have, we have a ring out match, pretty much a sumo match for the King of Pro Wrestling 2022 championship. Toriano taking who was the King of Pro Wrestling trophy holder, taking on the Holy Emperor himself, Taiichi, and Taiichi gets the victory around four minutes and 18 seconds. Man, I love this match, man. This is not going to be for everybody, but I love matches that play around logic and rules, so that was definitely going to get a thumbs up or two thumbs up for me right here. This was good. I definitely recommend going out of your way to check this out. A little under five minutes, man. It's this nice, fun action right here. So, then we get the pre-intermission uh, announcement. New Japan announced that the G1 Climax returning to the summer. They also announced the G1 Climax date. So, New Japan effectively has all reset its tournaments back to their original schedule in the year. So, when we get more information on both the Best of the Super Junior and G1 Climax, you already know to tune in here for that. So, then we have Sonata coming out. He's addressing the crowd, stating that he has to relinquish the IWGP United States Heavyweight title. Due to his fractured orbital bone, as he had no idea when he would be ready to return from 
in ring action. So, or return to in ring action right here. So, Sonata wanted to ultimately give the belt to Roshi Tanahashi, who was the previous champion. But Will Ospreay nixed that, who was the one who caused said injury right here. He came out and demanded that the United States Heavyweight title be handed to him. Tanahashi, a wild Tanahashi appears and told Ospreay to shut up. And a match is made between Tanahashi and Will Ospreay for the U.S. Heavyweight title. And I believe that match will be taking place on May 1st at the world-renowned Wrestling Duntaku. So, now we get the Never Openweight Championship match. We have the remaining defending champion representing the House of Torture and Bullet Club. Evil taking on his long uh, pet partner, his guy who grew up in a Young Lions program with a guy who... Yes, yeah, pretty much been one of the closest guys when he was in the LIJ, that being Hiromu Takahashi right here. So this is a really, really good match, especially by evil standards lately. The story was that Hiromu Takahashi knew evil's tricks. He knew how to count on them, and he was not afraid to use, he's not wasn't afraid to use evil's attacks against him. So sadly, Takahashi, Takahashi's energy and determination were his downfall, and he ran straight into evil. At times, this was great with Takahashi knowing how to get the best out of the evil formula. The turnabout is fair play spots were very cathartic, if you ask me. When Evil was in control of the match dragged and the finish was deflating as it felt like the right time to have Takahashi as never open weight champion. If you ask me, like I said, a very good Evil match, but ultimately it was not great. I think the wrong move was pulled. I think you should have pulled the trigger and had to run with Takahashi. Be the never open weight champion. Have him focus on a little bit something else besides the junior heavyweight division, besides the junior heavyweight title, because he's so singularly focused on that. And I think that had been a nice, just kind of uh, a, a nice little pathway, a, a nice little what they call a uh, Detour. It'd have been a nice little detour to have that happen. But alas, we don't get it. Next title match we have of the night right here. For the IWGP heavyweight tag team titles, we have the team of Bishimon, that being Yoshihashi and Hiroki Goto, taking on United Empire's Great Okan and Jeff Cobb right here. And we get new champions right here. Jeff Cobb pins Yoshihashi with the tour to Allen's 16 minutes, five seconds right here. This is a really good match. Full of double teams and in determination right here. I love when tag team matches are consistently having double team tag team moves. I love it. While I think sometimes this match maybe look was a little directionless at some point, it was full of solid action right here. Like I said, inventive double team moves. And the crowd was super engaged and happy to see Okan and Jeff Cobb get the victory right here. So for a lot of people, New Japan tag team division has been a weak point. Maybe getting, you know, injection of fresh blood, that being a nine empire can, you know, revitalize that because I felt maybe United Empire, that being Cobb and Okan, can do what the Dangerous Techers did for the last, I guess, two years. So that would be great, man. So next we have for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship, we have the champion, El Desperado, attempting to defend his title against a guy who's been a thorn in the side for the last couple weeks. That being Sho, El Desperado put Sho away with the Pinche Loco around 20 minutes and 33 seconds right here. Uh, this match is kind of longer than I expected. I thought this was a okay match this match like i said was better than what i thought it was going to be definitely longer than what i thought it was going to be of course we get the you know house of torture spots the ref bumps all that good stuff right here i think the highlight of this is actually what happened post match to me was we get taiji shimori coming out and making a challenge for that junior heavyweight title then we get from all japan pro wrestling francisco or francesco akira the fire the, i forgot what he was fire what do you call himself i gotta go back and look at his name something involving fire man i, I just I ain't really slept that long today, but it is what it is. So he's going to he announced himself to be a member of the United Empire. He's going to be in the best of the Super Junior. And I'm kind of glad to see him over in New Japan because I don't know if you've been listening to our channel for a while. I've always called him Kara Francesco like Will Ospreay like, over in all Japan or their version of Will Ospreay at the time. So that was just a little in jest. But no, he's over here in New Japan. He's in the United Empire. United Empire, maybe with the exception of that hiccup they had earlier in that tag match, United Empire is pretty much rolling right here, man. They are staking claim to be one of the dominant factions in New Japan after when they started maybe having like a little tough time coming out the gate. So now we get the main event here of this show. We have for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship, the reigning champion, Kazuchika Okada, taking on the New Japan Cup 2022 winner, Zack Sabre Jr. right here. This match went about 20 minutes, 25 seconds. I thought it would go longer than that. I was actually surprised it didn't. It was a really great match. We had some fantastic style changes from both guys right here. Okada used more grappling than normal than he, than he usually did. And Zach, or Zach Sabre Jr., he used more striking and more... Uh, he would kind of get the more advantages and striking changes, if you ask me. So I thought they added that little... Them both adding a little wrinkle was really good. I enjoyed this match immensely. Like I said, he didn't go 30 minutes. It's so wild to see Okada match not go 30 minutes when it's, you know, scheduled where it has a 60-minute time limit. So when I think about the show wrapping it up top to bottom, it was a really, really solid show, especially by current New Japan standards. I don't think it held, holds up to the pre-2020 New Japan stuff. 
presence of the House of Torture matches were maybe not ideal for some. Both Romu Takahashi and Desperado were good enough to get the crowd behind them and channeled a formula in winning, uh, formula in different but entertaining ways, excuse me. The main event was strong and felt fresher than a lot of Okada title matches that he's had in the past, if you ask me. A lot of other matches are either told in their story or were actually good, to be honest. Taichi versus Yano was the best King of Pro Wrestling match by far, if you ask me. So I did expect some good matches on the show. I didn't expect the crowd to be so into it because I'm still used to the crowd being very subdued at this point. It features some loud audible gasp here. The New Japan crowd clap. It was the hottest match in the New Japan Pro Wrestling crowd clap era. So that's something to hang our hats on right here. I thought they would maybe give the lineup for BSOJ, but it looks like when they get that here in the coming weeks. So I said, I think adding Francisco Akira to the junior heavyweight division is a much needed move. And it adds, you know, some fresh air to maybe a stale junior heavyweight division. So be on the lookout for all that stuff, man. You know who we are. We are the almighty SOS wrestling network. Be sure you like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Tell a friend to tell a friend price of subscription. As we all know, free 99. So thank you for checking out this review. Pro wrestling fly God. I'll holler at y'all later. Peace.